Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to the very first edition of Clearing the Benches, and I am your host, Frank, and as you can see, today we're outside at the beautiful Usury Mountain Archery Range, and today we're going to break the ice, and we're going to do a quick buying or selling. I've got in my hot little hands the Arizona Casino odds to win the Stanley Cup. We're going to go through them one by one, give you a little comment on what I think about each team, and we'll go from there. So, first up, they've got... Carolina Hurricanes plus 800 to win the cup. Uh, I hate to say it, but I just don't buy it in the last three conference finals. Rob the Bod is 0 and 12, swept in three straight series. Again, they don't have a sniper. You know, Ajo's a good player, but as far as, you know, a real guy that's going to put a threat out there, I really don't think they have it. They got a bunch of second, third liners. Uh, the Jasper Fosts and Brady Shays of the world. So anyway, I am selling. Toronto Maple Leafs plus 900. This one's pretty tough right here. You know, it's got to happen sometime for the Leafs. It's been what, like 58 years? And I got to tell you, Matthews, as much as I didn't like him because of his attitude when he first came into the league, I'm starting to, he's starting to grow on me. He blocks more shots than any other forward in the NHL. And, you know, a one game in, he's already got a hat trick. The one thing that concerns me about them is, you know, you just gave up five goals to the Montreal Canadiens, who are not exactly the Canadians of the 70s. So on this one here, I got to tell you, at plus 900, I'm going to buy. I got 20 bucks for that one. Colorado Avalanche are next on our list, and they are at plus 1,000. I tell you, last year, I thought it was going to come down to Georgiev. I didn't know if he was going to have the mental capability of uh, doing what it took to get them, you know, deep into the playoffs, and whether you could put the blame completely on him or if they were just, you know, overwhelmed by a surprising Seattle team in that first round. Um, but I got to tell you, I watched them last night against the Kings and they look pretty dominant. Looks like McCarr's back healthy again, Rantanen's back to who he used to be, you know, last year. And, uh, you know, as far as Landis God goes, it really doesn't look like they're going to miss him all that much based on, you know, what I've seen so far. Only one game in, but it, it looks pretty good out there. So as far as the Avalanche, plus 1,000, I got 20 for that. I'm buying. Edmonton Oilers. Just lost 8-1 last night in the first game of the season to the Vancouver Canucks. Last year, everybody knew it was going to come down to it, and it did. Goaltending issues. They never solved the issue. They just had it coming, coming, coming. Skinner, 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 and it didn't work out. And then you look at last night's game against the Canucks. You know, I know it's only the first game of the year, but geez, you give up eight goals? Uh, it's just one of those things that I look at and I think to myself, you know, is Darnell Nurse really the superstar defenseman or is he just a big guy out there who throws the body and, you know, he gets in the way every once in a while. Not sold on them at all. As far as the Edmonton Oilers at plus 1,000, selling. Next up, we've got the Jersey Devils. I got to tell you, they're one of my favorites to win the cup this year straight off the bat. Uh, they got it all. These kids up front, you know, their defense, uh, Dougie Hamilton's not Bobby Orr. But then again, you know, you may not need to be. You got all this firepower up front with all these young kids. Hughes, Heischer, Mercer, uh, Brat. The list goes on and on, you know. And even defensively, you know, they just brought Ball up last year. He's been, you know... Uh, he's been lingering in their minor league team for in their system for a little bit. And last year he started to show that maybe his skating's improved enough where he can really start to become a force back there. So as far as the Devils at plus a thousand all day long, if they get any kind of goaling out of Schmidt and Vanacek, I got to say that they're the favorites to come out of the East. Next up, we got the Vegas Golden Knights defending Stanley C Cup champs. How about those rings? Those things were the awesomest things ever. Plus 1,200. I got to tell you, I got 50 bucks on this. This tells me, same team as last year for the most part, if they can get any kind of goaltending again. And, you know, you went through five goalies last year. Is it really going to matter if it's just one guy or if it's just goalie by committee? I tell you, I think their forwards are still gritty. I think that they've got a heavy, heavy defensive back end that really likes to log a lot of minutes. And if they can just keep the puck out of their own net, you know, I know you can say that for any team, but especially with Vegas, if, you know, you can limit teams to two goals a game, you're going to win most of your games. As far as the Vegas Golden Knights at plus 120, yeah, I got 20 for that. Boston Bruins plus 1,300. First thing I think of is when I think of the Bruins is 
Marshawn missing on the breakaway that could have put him into the next series and he choked on it. You lost Krejci, now you lost Bergeron. You made Marshawn the captain. I don't know if that's gonna be such a great move. The guy's pretty emotional. He lets his emotions get the better of him a lot of time. And you really kind of want a guy who's gonna keep his emotions in check. However, they already named him the captain and they're going from there. Uh, I did not like what they lost in the guys that, you know, they lost Bertuzzi, they lost the kid from uh, Washington, Orlov, and then, you know, you bring in guys like Kevin Shattenkirk. I mean, nothing for nothing, but like Shattenkirk was terrible like seven years ago when he was on the Blues, and then they unloaded him to the Capitals, and he was terrible on the Capitals. He went to the Rangers. He was terrible on the Rangers. I don't know how this guy, he must have pictures of somebody with a billy goat because I don't know how he's staying in the league and especially making these contracts that he is. So as far as the Boston Bruins go, plus 1,300, selling. I don't think they're even going to make the playoffs this year. New York Rangers, plus 1,300. You know, that's my hometown team. But it's a tough one, you know. Peter Laviolette is like basically on a one-year PTO. You know, it's going to be bust or nothing. Uh, you know, cup or bust, rather. So if they don't win the cup, you know, really, is Laviolette even going to stick around? You look at a guy like him, and he's a first-year results-oriented guy. You know, same with Gallant. That's how Gallant had the big push with the Rangers a couple of years ago. Um, I got to tell you, though, as a Ranger fan, you know, I, I do. I know that Fox and Miller and Truba, everybody thinks the world of them. I love Truba. I like the fact that he plays a physical game. He backs it up. He gets in fights. To me, he's a true captain. Fox, Miller, you know, I know that they get all the accolades and everyone thinks they're the greatest thing since, you know, Bobby Orr and Dallas Smith. But I think uh, Miller's one of those kind of looks like Tarzan, plays like Jane. He needs to rough it up a little bit more. And nothing for nothing, but I saw Fox uh, some, some pretty glaring turnovers last year that I'd like to see him, you know, work on this year. And maybe cut down a little bit on the offense and start working a little bit more on the defense. I know Shesterkin's a great goalie, but uh, I got to tell you, it, the Rangers are in all or bust mode and I don't think that they can handle the pressure I don't think that they have the right guys up there personally I think they're misusing Lafreniere you know you got a lot of star power in Zibanejad and Panarin and all these guys up front but can you really get them all to gel when it matters and that's going to be when you play against the Devils the Canes the Maple Leafs these teams that you know can bring it so as far as the Rangers at plus 1300 nah not me I'm selling Dallas Stars plus 1400 you got my interest right here. You know, I look down the middle and you think a team's got good goaltending, a good defense, and a good offense. They got all three down there in the big D, you know. And eventually, one of these days, you know, a guy like Pavelski's going to come around. And to me, they are going they have the best shot to me at coming out of the West just as much as, as Vegas does. You know, last year, I think when it came down to them or Vegas, you know, Vegas, I think, had a heavier D. And I think they were able to wear them down with that. Um, you know, and, and let's see what happens this year. You know, Ottinger's got another year under his belt. You know, you look at the D that they have, you know, look at Robertson up front. You know, yes, yeah, Sagan's getting a little bit old and they got some guys that are getting a little bit old up there, but they're also seasoned and they already know how to win. So as far as Dallas Stars at plus 1400, I got 20 on that. I'm buying Florida Panthers plus 1600. Hate to say it, but I'm thinking last year might have just been a flash in the pan. They got too many breaks when they needed them. They got every break when they needed it. Uh, you know, nothing for nothing, but Marshawn missing the breakaway started it all off, and then you go from there. But Brovsky played like, you know, he had 12 legs and 10 arms and, and 14 goalie sticks in there. He really played, I thought, probably the best hockey he's ever going to play. And, you know, can he replicate that again when it matters, you know, down the stretch again? And I'm, I'm saying that... Plus 1,600, I think uh, Florida, I'm, I'm selling on this one. I don't think that they're going to, I don't think they're going to make it past the first round. Tampa Bay Lightning are next on the list, plus 2,000. You know, everyone kind of forgets about the Lightning. They won those cups. They kind of had a little mini dynasty going, and then it all of a sudden seemed like they got old fast, and they started having to make moves. But some of the moves that they did make bringing guys in, Hagel, I don't know what the Blackhawks were thinking. I would, I know that they wish they had him now, you know, to go with the, the lineup that they're trying to put out there. Hagel would be a centerpiece that they could put out there with Bedard. Uh, as far as, you know, the other night you watch, and they still look like they've got it, you know, uh, on the back end, you know, they still have big heavy minutes that they can get out of, uh, what's his face, 77. Oh my God, drawing a blank. 
Um, but anyway, you know, Stamkos and the contract situation, I was surprised to see him out there. I thought he might have held out a couple more days and tried to make a big stink about it. But apparently he's just going to ride it out. You know, whether that means maybe this is his last year. He rides off into the sunset. Maybe he looks at it next year in the off season and somebody offers him, you know, nine, ten million dollars just so he can come over and, you know, mentor their team. Uh, but as far as this year goes, Hedman is 77. I'm sorry about that one there. Um, as far as this goes, Tampa Bay plus 2,000, uh, plus 200. I'm sorry, plus 2,000. Save your money. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm selling. Kings at plus 2,200. Now you got my interest again. Again, it's all going to come down to the goaltending. Cam Talbot is not the answer in net. Not going to happen. Seems like Robitaille and Blake have done a really, really... In my eyes, surprising, surprisingly good job in putting this lineup together. When they first started off, I was very skeptical and I thought, you know, they're just throwing a lot of stuff on the wall and seeing what's going to stick, you know. But now you look at the guys that they have and you got some skill guys, you know, now that you have, you know, P.L. Dubois instead of Pierre Luc Dubois, you know, go along with Fiala. You got guys like Ardvidson, you know, Kopitar is. A Hall of Famer. You know, the guys led their team in scoring 15 out of 16 years. I can't see that somebody else is going to do it this year, you know, unless one of these, you know, guys that they bought in, to, you know, do it. So uh, I think on the back end, they've got some good D. I like where they did last year. You know, they showed a little bit more grit than I thought everyone thought they were going to show. And I think this year they have a good chance, you know, coming out of the West. To me, I look at there's just a couple of three teams you got to, you know, really get past. And some of those teams could eliminate themselves. So as far as the LA Kings at plus 2,200, I got 20 bucks on that. I'm buying. Next up, we got the Calgary Flames. Drops back down to plus 3,000. Now, Calgary, uh, I'm not a big Jonathan Huberdeau fan. I got to tell you, when they made that deal and they let Kachuk go and then they lost Johnny Hockey. And, uh, you know, even in the years past, you know, I know that it was a while back, but, you know, you, you had guys... <sighs> Dougie Hamilton, guys who were, and to me, showing that they were going towards a cup. The team that they have right now, they're in no man's land, in my opinion. It, you know, it, they it, they could have 100 points. They could have 60 points. You know, I just look at them and I think to myself, they're one of those teams that, like, seriously, they're not on very many teams' radar, in my opinion. And I think that they're going to probably just finish middle of the pack. They're probably going to finish like 18th, 19th overall, probably just around 500. And as far as the playoffs go, I just don't see it. So obviously I am selling on the flames. Next up, Minnesota Wild at plus 3,000. Yeah, I'm not buying that one either. I got to tell you, you know, you got Kaprizov and you got some, you know, older guys there, you know, Zuccarello. And you look and I see, you know, the, the kid is good in goal, Gustafson, but you only saw him for one year. Can he do that over, you know, a length of time? Can he do that deep into the playoffs? Can he show that he's, you know, got, can he play at the Jake Ottinger level? Can he get up to these next levels that these guys are at? Um, and I honestly don't think that, it, you know, the wild in front of him, I think it's really going to come down to Kaprizov and, and really Matt Boldy. I just don't like what they've done. You know, they let Dumbo go. I know Dumbo didn't really exactly light it up last year. I think he had like 14 points in 78 games. So, you know, that's not saying much on the offensive end. Defensively, I'm not really, you know, sure if he was all that stellar, but I'm sure he wasn't all that bad. If the Coyotes gave him a nice little contract like they did this year, they must think he's still able to play on the back end to some extent. So, um, again, Minnesota Wild, just my opinion, plus 3,000, not happening. Uh, next up, Penguins, plus 3,000 right off the bat. Not happening. They blew that lead the other night to Chicago. I know it's only the first game of the year, but it looks like it's just Crosby and company. Malkin looks like he's the invisible man. Last couple of years, like, I was shocked. They gave him that four-year deal a couple of years ago at, like, the last second of the deadline of whenever – whoever's deadline that was but I was shocked that they gave him a four-year deal I thought for sure they would let him walk and he would go to a team like the Kings or you know the Devils somebody who had, they just need a little bit of seasoning in their sauce and they'd be able to make it nice and spicy but they didn't so Penguins I don't know I can't see it I think Crosby's he looked really good the other night but it looks like a one-man gang out there and you know Jari played okay but I just don't see it. So Penguins plus 3,000, save your money. 
Buffalo Savers plus 3,500. Tell you right off the bat, I got 10 bucks for this. Yes. They have got an up and coming team. And you know, the way teams have been coming out of nowhere, you know, the crack in a couple of years ago, Florida, it's not out of the realm that these teams can just show up out of nowhere, have a good year and roll into the playoffs and, and do well. Again, it comes down. If you have a good goaltender, Devin Levi looks like he's going to be the real deal in Buffalo. You know, you look at them up front, you got TNT, you got cousins, you got Skinner. Look at the guys that got on the back end with Darlene and power. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of skill out there that you got to look at. And you got to think who are they really going to go up against in the playoffs? The Devils, the Maple Leafs, I, I don't think the Canes are going to make it that far. So I do definitely, definitely, definitely have 20 bucks, 10 bucks, whatever I said for the Sabres at plus 3,500. Also, and I will take this one as well, the Seattle Kraken at plus 3,500. Last year, they had their big surprise run to the Cup. And to be honest with you, if they'd played anybody but Vegas, they would have won the Cup last year. I mean, I'm sorry if, uh, you know, Vegas in the Western Finals, but I'm... I really do think that if they had played against anybody else, they would have won the cup. You know, one team beat them out. And I hate to say it, but I think they would have beat Florida straight up. Um, you know, Florida was hurt. Florida started to slow down. Bobrovsky kind of started to show his age and, you know, some holes that he has in this game. So, um, cracking this year, I'm all over it. Matty Beneers, I think the world of that kid. I look at their golding, their goaltending situation, and I think they've got enough in the two guys that they've got there that they can get all the way through. Defensively, they play a solid game. You know, they remind me of the Penguins of the early 90s. You know, you had a team with some firepower up front, but they also played a two-way game that they could shut you down. Forwards that knew how to shut you down. Defensemen that knew how to shut you down. You know, and you get just good enough goaltending. You never know. You know, who would have thought Vegas would have won last year's cup with five different goalies? So as far as the Kraken at plus 3,500, yes, all day long. Next up, Ottawa Senators, plus 4,000. No, straight off. I think they got too many issues. They don't have enough firepower up front. I love Brady Kachuk. I think he's uh, a five-star player. I think he's, you know, the Swiss Army knife. He brings it all. He scores. He fights. He hits. He's a leader. He backs up his teammates. He does everything that you would want a kid to do. And at a young age, too. Um, and when you see him sitting next to his brother and they have, like, T-shirts on, massive, massive size increase from Brady to Matthew. So as far as Senators go, plus 4,000, maybe in a couple of years, I just, because Giroux was from that area, I couldn't see that they bought him back last year and they did. Maybe they think he's going to be good with Stutzel, but as far as at them at plus 4,000, save your money. Next up, Islanders drops down a thousand to plus 5,000. Islanders are another one of those teams to me in no man's land. Matt Barzell can never really get it going enough to where I think he should be a top 20 player. He should be like, you know, a Sebastian Ajo type. You should definitely be looking at like 35 goals, 65 assists every year. And he doesn't. I know he's been injured a little bit. Um, and I know that the, uh, that the Islanders have made a lot of changes. You know, you got changes behind the bench. You got changes on the ice. And, you know, great goalie in Sorokin, but... Uh, I just don't see that they have guys enough guys in front of them. I really don't. You know, you look at, you know, Oliver Wallstrom. You look at Noah Dobson. Dobson's great, but he plays D, and they need scoring. That's the only thing I can see, you know. Hate to say it, but they may have stuck with the Josh Bailey, Cal, Cal Clutterbuck, Matt Martin, Sezikis. That, they may should have let that ship set sail a couple of years ago and started to move on to some of these younger players. I feel like they're kind of an older team. And again, I feel like they're in no man's land. And I even doubt that they would make the playoffs, no less make a cup run. So the Islanders at plus 5,000, I'm out. Winnipeg Jets, another team to be that's in no man's land. I was shocked that they signed both Shifley and Hellebuck the other day to those contract extensions. I think that it may just be telling the rest of the league. I, you know, I know there's no move clauses, but those can also, you know, be easily uh, erased by the player when he says, I want to go to a certain place. No move clause or not. Send me there and I'm going. And I think when you got a guy like Hellebuck, now you know his price tag for if you're another team and you know what you're going to have to offer to get him in. I think that teams like the Maple Leafs, the Devils, the Hurricanes would be crazy not to offer up the farm to get Hellebuck in. This would be a chance, especially, I think, 
a team like the Maple Leafs, you got to, this is your window right here. You could probably win like, you know, the next two, three cups if you had some good goaltending. And again, I, I look at the, you know, these guys that they have out there and you say to yourself, you know, Shifley, I didn't think they were going to bring back because I think that they thought he was a head case and I think he, they thought he was mentally checked out. I thought he would go to another team on a one-year PTO, bringing him back on a big thing like that, and they say, oh, we're all in. I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. I look at, you know, Morrissey, awesome. You know, I look at Hellebuck, awesome. You know, on paper, even a couple of years ago, you look at Kyle Connor. Kyle Connor in the last five years is like fifth overall and he's like one guy who has most goals and assists. He has like over 200 goals, over 200 assists. I don't know that anybody else has that over the last five years, but he does. And again, you look at this team on paper and you say to yourself, holy cow, how come they're not going deeper every year? You know, even the youngsters coming up, you got Perfetti coming up. You know, these kids are, they're experienced, they're seasoned. They know what it takes to score goals. They know how to win. I was a little surprised that they've kind of just gone in the, I don't know, everywhere direction that they've gone and they really haven't like focused in, you know, now that they signed Shifley and Hellebuck, they say that they're focused in and, oh, this is the future. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think if they're out of a playoff spot, you know, Christmas time, the trades are going to start coming and I think they're going to be big name trades. Next up on this list, you've got the Vancouver Canucks drops down to plus 6,000. Got to tell you, they were very impressive last night. An 8-1 win over Winnipeg, I mean, over Edmonton, the opening game of the season. And, you know, you look at a guy like JT Miller had four points. Brock Besser had a hat trick and four points. You know, you got a good goalie up there. You get some team defense. Rick Tockett is a team first guy. Rick Tockett is going to make you block shots. Rick Tockett's going to make you get in fights when the other team, when your other teammates are in fight, he's going to make you get in a fight with them and he's going to make you stick up for your teammates. I am thinking that the Vancouver Canucks this year could take a step forward. Would I take them at plus 6,000 to win the cup? No, definitely not. But would I take them to have a pretty significant jump this year? Definitely so. So I think Canucks on the upswing. Next up, Detroit Red Wings plus 7,500. The Iser plan. I think it's six years in. Got to admit, starting to doubt the Iser plan big time. I just think that they bought in a bunch of second and third line guys. You know, the Andrew Cops of the world, the Shane Goss despairs. You know, last year it was Mark Stahl or the year before. I look at them and I think to myself, where are you really going with all this? You know, you got this kid Kosa coming up in the nets. You know, get him some action. Let him see some pucks. Let him see what it's going to be like. You know, one day, I hate to say it, but, you know, the kid could be looking at a shooting gallery. Uh, as far as them, I'll say one thing about them. If they're in a playoff position coming down the stretch – and I don't think Patrick Kane is going to make his decision on where he's going to sign until right before the trading deadline. I, going to, I think he wants to position himself in the best place that he could, have a Stanley Cup. I think he really, in his heart of hearts, I think he wants to go to Buffalo because that's his hometown, you know, and wouldn't it be great he'd, you know, get the Sabres their first ever Stanley Cup and blah, 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 blah. Second, I think he might go to the Rangers. And third of all, I think a team like the Devils. They just need a little, like Kane on the Devils. If they've got goaltending and they're rolling in March, that would be dangerous. So as far as the Red Wings go, eh, I'm not really too sure. I don't look at their lineup and I don't think anything on there jumps out at me. You know, you look and you think to Brinkat. I, I, you know, yeah, you brought him home, but what happens if the kid doesn't do well here? What happens if he te what happens if he tops out at like a twenty goal score instead of like a forty goal score like he's been? Um, Detroit Red Wings plus seventy five hundred negative on that one. Next up, we've also got plus seventy five hundred the Nashville Predators. I'm just going to tell you straight out, nope, I don't even think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they've got a good, you know, they've got Yossi, they've got Soros, you know, you got a little stability back on the back end there with McDonough. You got great scoring up front with Forsberg. Ryan O'Reilly, to me, is a good second line guy. He's a good grinder, big leader in the locker room. But is he going to be a guy, you know, who's going to, who's going to take this team to the next level and I just don't think that's going to be the case with them so as far as Nashville Predators I think they got a couple more years of rebuilding I know Barry Trotz just took over but give it a couple years not this year plus 7,500 I am out next up St. Louis Blues 
calling it right now. Craig Berube is going to be the next coach of the Rangers. If it doesn't work with, out with LaViolette and something happens and the Blues have a crappy year and they fire him, he may go to TV for a year. He'll come back and he'll be coach again. He he gets the most out of his team. I look at all the big sell-off that they had over the last couple of years. And, you know, you, you can't dump guys like O'Reilly and Tarasenko and Barbashov and expect to win. You just not. It's not going to happen. Even when they lost Petrangelo, you know, way back in the day to Vegas, that's a big chunk of change that you're taking out of your pocket. And that's going to be something that later on, when you go to buy something, you reach in there, your pocket's empty. You can't. You got to have guys that you can use back there. I look at them. Tory Krug, that was a big mistake. You know, it, even even the kids and even the fans in Boston knew he was on his on the decline when they got, you know, when they got rid of him. So uh, St. Louis Blues. Oh, and what? Bennington in the net? Jeez, let's see who he's going to fight this year. What's the over-under on fights for Bennington? I'm going to give it three. I'm taking the over on that one, by the way. So anyway, St. Louis Blues at plus 7,500. I'm out. Washington Capitals also at plus 7,500. Got to tell you, it's just Ovechkin's chase to catch Gretzky. That's about it. He's, I think, 72 behind. You know, in my at his age... My math, that's going to translate to like about two and a quarter seasons. So if this is 23, 24, 24, 25, maybe he's going to hit it around like November 25, 26, in my opinion. Otherwise, I think that is a very, very, very old and aging team. I can look at TJ Oshie. Not a fan. A stick guy. He's a little chippy behind the play. Always, I don't know. Always seems like he's got a lot to say after the whistle, but not a lot between the whistle. But that's just my opinion. Anyway, as far as the Capitals go, I look at them too. You know, you got Nicholas Backstrom. That that back injury is never going to get any better. I look at John Carlson. I, I just don't see it. I look at Carlson. He logs a lot of minutes. But as far as the offensive prowess that he used to bring years ago, not there anymore. Far from it. Now, they do have some kids that I like coming up in the pipeline. And I saw that, you know, they starting to play a little less, it seems like, Ovechkin centric game where everything has to go through him to try and get him the goal. I started to notice the other day. I watched him in a preseason game. You know, guys were guys were doing their own thing out there as versus like you know everyone looking up to see where Ovechkin is. But as far as the Capitals go, plus seventy five hundred. I don't think the Caps make the playoffs in the next five years, so I'm out. Next up, we've got the Columbus Blue Jackets at plus fifteen hundred. Too young, Babcock thing was a big mistake. I got to tell you, I think JD and uh, whatever his name is, Pekalainen, Rekarainen, whatever his name is, the uh, GM out there. Oof, I don't know. You know, um, they got Fantilli handed to them. They got Johnny Hockey handed to them. And in a sense, they kind of got Line handed to them. Um, but as far as them... They don't have any structure. You look at that team and you don't say, oh, that's Johnny Hockey's team. Or you look at that team and you say, oh, that's Fantilli. You know, Fantilli hasn't played yet for them. But as far as looking at their lineup last year, he's probably going to be like their second, third best guy easily. I think Johnny Hockey and him could, you know, do some good damage on the power play. But as far as Columbus Blue Jackets, plus 1,500, save your money. Next up, also at 1,500, Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Tortorella is going to squeeze a lot out of these guys, and I always look at every John Tortorella team, and I always think that they always improve, even if it's just a couple of points or maybe just a couple of guys in their lineup get better. Um, he is definitely team first. He doesn't care who you are. You are going to block shots for him. You are going to put the team before yourself. It's always one of those, you know, name on the front of the jersey before the name on the back of the jersey things. Uh, you know, uh, as far as their draft and they drafted Mitchkov, you know, listen, apparently the kid gave a short list of guys that he wanted to play teams that he wanted to play for right before the draft. And the flyers were on that short list. So, you know, as far as Breer taking a shot at him, why not? If the kid is as good as he's supposed to be. And, you know, a lot of these guys, now that they all got drafted this year, the two kids on the coyotes, they're not coming in before three years. So it seems like, you know, three years is like the time it takes to marinate a guy before he's going to be NHL ready anyway. Um, who knows? The kid might be NHL ready, you know, a little bit quicker. Maybe he's a little bit closer to Bedard than he is the rest of the NHL. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's just, you know, a lot of hype coming out of the KHL and they think he's the greatest thing since sliced bread and he's not. 
we'll have to see. But as far as the Flyers go this year, ooh, they are going to be in for a long season. I think the Carter Hart issue is going to come to a head, and I think they're going to finally make a decision on him, and I think it's going to be they're going to deal him. Carter Hart could be the, you know, the missing piece on a team that needs a goalie. Toronto. Why the hell not? You think, you know, I look at them. Why not? You know, you look at another team. Uh, the Devils, Vanacek, Schmid. You know, in a short sample size, they did well for them. But as far as like having a chance, Carter Hart would give your team a good chance to win, especially when he's got good players in front of him. You know, like a team like the Devils does, like the team like the Maple Leafs would. So as far as Flyers go at plus 1,500, no. But I definitely think that they've got some pieces coming up in the pipeline. And next year, they could be one of those teams if Tortorella sticks around. They could be a team that makes a jump and, you know, kind of in the wild card chase. Not this year, but next year. So as far as Flyers plus 1,500, I'm out. Chicago Blackhawks plus 2,000, I'm out. Bedard's good. He ain't that good. They're not making the playoffs. It doesn't matter how many points. He could score 500 points this year. They're not making the playoffs. As far as just, you know, uh, the future goes, yeah, look at Lucas Reichel. That kid looks like he's the real deal. All of a sudden, Seth Jones looks like he's playing with some urgency again. You know, uh, maybe three years from now, I think this team might, you know, make a wild card push maybe two years from now. But as far as this year at plus 2,000, I'm out. Next up, we've got the Anaheim Ducks at plus 2,500. Um, I'm not really sure what Pat Verbeek's got cooking over there in Anaheim, but whatever it is, he is only willing to pay pennies on the dollar to whoever you are. He doesn't care Zegris. He doesn't care Jamie Drysdale. You know, but it's funny. He threw out four, $4 million to like Kalorn and uh, Gudis, but he doesn't want to give the money to his own kids. Kind of seems strange to me. And I hate to say it, I think it's going to bite him in the ass. I think it's going to be one of those things in three years, these kids are going to remember that he lowballed them and the first team that comes. And even if they're restricted free agents, one of those kids will say, you sign with me and I'll sign back and I'll come and I'll play for you. Um, Zegers being from New York, of course, I would think that he you know, would want to go to New York, go to the Rangers. But my God, could you imagine Zegers playing in New Jersey with he sure, yes, for Brat and, and Quinn? Yeah. So, um, and Quinn, and Hughes, rather. I'm sorry. Thinking of Quinn Hughes. Um, yeah, that would be some serious firepower. But as far as reality goes, and back to today, plus 2,000, negative on that save. I'm sorry, plus 2,500, negative on that. Save your money. And the other thing is John Gibson going to have to get dealt at some point this year. I think that they're going to just probably flip him for maybe a big-name prospect or a future you know, first-rounder or something. But I think this is the year that they finally do get rid of uh, Gibson. And then next up, we have the Arizona Coyotes at plus 2,500. You know, everyone is all excited. I'm in Arizona right now. Everyone's all excited out here. You know, you got <clears throat> Cooley, you got uh, Keller, you got Shelly, you got all these young kids that are coming up. I got to tell you, I'm a little bit concerned about Dylan Gunther not making this team. To me, that is... Uh, a red flag there. I just thought there's no way possible. This kid is not making the team and somehow they sent him back down to Tucson. Maybe they have some kind of an agreement with them, but I am not sure. Uh, yes, they have a lot of young kids on their thing. They bought some guys back. They bought back Nick Bukestad. They back, bought back Troy Stetcher. Um, you know, they moved on last year from a lot of guys. Goss despair. They moved on from, uh, goaltending is going to be their issue this year. You know, Ingram, in my opinion, a good backup goalie gets you 35 games. And if you play him 35 games, I think he gets you 18 or 19 wins in those 35 games. Vemelka, not so sure. Um, gave up a lot of goals last year. I think it was 26 times he gave up four goals or more in a game. That's a lot of goals you're asking your team to score to put a win on the board. So as far as the Arizona Coyotes go, as much as I think Bill Armstrong and, um, you know, Turn A, Bear behind the bench are doing a great job maybe they could go into like a playoff push in the wild card thing. Maybe they'll still be in some meaningful games last two weeks of March. But as far as going to win the cup at plus 2,500, I am out on that one selling big time. Montreal Canadiens also at plus 2,500. Listen, Marty St. Louis is doing a good job up there. They're bringing a lot of these kids along, I think quicker than they, you know, thought that they would be. Um, you know, they had a, a drop off, 
last year as far as the team goes. But in terms of like the young players, I think they're on the right, you know, Cole Caulfield. You look at these guys, they're on the right, they're on the right path with them. It's going to take them a little bit of time, but I think they're right. They're making the right moves. And, you know, Reinbach, Reinbacher, uh, you know, that's the real deal. Slavkovsky, to me, another kid, the real deal. You know, it, it takes these kids some time. You know, they're not all going to come in the league and be McDavid and light it up right away. You know, you look at you look at guys, even McKinnon and Dreisaitl took a little bit of time before they really, really started cooking. So uh, as far as Canadians plus 2,500, oof, I think that's going to be a team that, Canadian fans, you're going to have to wait about three or four more years before you're going to get a really serious playoff push. So at plus 2,500, I am out on the Montreal Canadiens. And last, but certainly not least, at plus 2,500, we have the San Jose Sharks. Again, I think Mike Greer is doing a great job up in San Jose. I think he's drafting the right players. I think he's created the right culture. I think when they moved along from, you know, guys like Pavelski, I think Logan Couture is going to be next. Uh, Brett Burns, um, you know, that's saying a lot. You know, you're saying, hey, listen, this is the identity of our team for like almost, you know, seven, eight years. And now you're moving on from them. And, you know, now you're going to Thomas Hurdle. And, you know, they moved on from Timo Meyer. Uh, again, Will Smith, good draft pick. Um, I, I think in the future, they may be one of the teams that makes it up the quickest. Um, I'm not 100% sure what their goal, their goaltending situation is in the pipeline. But as far as like forwards and D and just Mike Greer, if, if he builds a team the way he played, you know, his thought process is the same as like when he played a game. I'll tell you what, I think the Sharks are going to be a tough team to play against this year. Probably not going to win a whole lot of games, but in the next couple of years, they're going to start to take significant steps. And I would say probably about four years from now, you're going to see, see these kids like Will Smith start, you know, possibly be talking about all-star game. And, you know, maybe at that point, they're maybe able to make a little bit of a playoff push. So anyway, listen, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. And I really appreciate you giving me all your viewership. And I'm going to try to do this about once a week out here, maybe not in this particular location, but other locations. And again, thanks for watching Clearing the Benches. And as always, let them know you're out there.